Now, the sound of Houston hip hop changed a lot from 89 to the mid 90s. Right. You know, like uh, when you look at, you know, the Ghetto Boys' first album, well, I guess second album more so, like the uh, Grip It on the Other Level. Mm hmm. You know, very, very East Coast influence, but still had a very Southern heart to it. Right. And then as you, like, you know, travel a little bit further down the road, you get a little bit more into, like, the, you know, the live instrumentation with, uh, you know, the Resurrection album. And even yeah. going on to um, uh, the Odd Squad, you know, right. Fat Enough for Everybody and, like, you know, the Big Mike and, yeah. and all that other stuff that was coming at the time. Like, y'all really, you know, si you know, made a signature sound that was real representative of Texas. Right. Like... Is there a particular era that you liked more so for your yeah. label than another? Yeah, I love that era. What happened was, and how it evolved, uh, originally it was an East Coast producer, Ready Red. And then, you know what I mean, after he uh, vanished from the situation, Beto, Mike Dean, you know what I mean, N.O. Joe, these producers that was down south, you know what I mean, brought their flavor to the table, which caused us to really have our originality, our sound. Man, and that sound is taking you guys all the way to the bank. Yeah. Um, when you look at the transition that you made from the music business to <clears throat> boxing, which, 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 which version of the business is more cutthroat? You know, both of them are cutthroat businesses. You know what I mean? Because if you think about it, you, uh, a lot of the ingredients are the same even beginning with homies that's from the hood. You know what I mean? Rappers, boxers, a lot of them from the same place. And then, you know what I mean, uh, uh, a lot of uh, those other <laughs> situations are the same, too. You know, you're dealing with different networks and different people, you know, that uh, run things in this world. <laughs> You said a lot without saying much. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I totally you know, you know where you're going with it. <laughs> yeah. And, and you've had the opportunity to work with a lot of, like, you know, major dudes. Like, I mean, Andre Ward. Yeah. You know, he, he's still out here getting busy. Uh, Floyd Mayweather. Right. You guys had, like, what, like a four or five-year run? Yeah, yeah, four years. Yeah, I managed Floyd for four years. Andre actually has just retired. Really? Yeah. yeah like, Andre. like, just retired? Like, in the last month or two? Well, no, maybe, what, five or six months. Okay. After the not long after the Kovalok fight, he made a decision that, you know, what I mean, he's gonna exercise his entrepreneurship in other areas, and hang the gloves up. Now, after Mayweather leaves you, obviously, you know, he goes on and do, does his own thing. Right. You know, Mayweather promotions. How much of the game did you give him, and do you wish you could have kept him longer? Well, I think flawed whole foundation of his movement and different things. You know, I had something to do with it. You know what I mean? When I came on board, uh, Flog was, uh, he would go to a press conference and and kind of be quiet and be nice. You know what I mean? After spending time with Flog, I'm like, man, you got to be yourself. You know what I mean? Be Flog. Be, be this person right here that, that's not at the press conference. And you know what I mean? It was from a lot of those moments, even uh, the fight with him and Diego Corrales. You know what I mean? To me, that fight was his really breakout fight. You know what I mean? That's what really transformed him to a whole different level. And it was it was an art and a science of even getting that fight. You know what I mean? That we created together. So you know, I I, I love the journey and the, the, the accolades and different things that Floyd has accomplished where his career is concerned. And he and I we still speak. So That's to good. ask me if I would like to still be a part of that journey. I feel that I am, but I would love to get paid some of that paper he's been getting. <laughs> Yo, especially, you know, he, he's been dancing with the idea of doing MMA off and on, and it's yeah. like, I want him to do it because I, I, I like to see people do the impossible. Right. I, lo I, lo I love it, especially, like, when we pull it off, you know? Yeah. But I don't want him to get hurt because I've seen so many boxers get into that MMA yeah. ring. Like, when James Tony did it, I thought he had a puncher's chance. <laughs> But the skill set wasn't there. Like, right. even when you look at what Kimbo Slice did in the sport, yeah, I felt like he should have just fought more randos, you know, before he went in there with some legit guys. But, you know, yeah, anything is possible. Yeah, me knowing Floyd, he he he's not stupid when it comes to that ring. So I wouldn't be surprised if you never even see that. Yeah. And if you do, it may be restrictions. Got you. Yeah. Standing only, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. Man, Um. so... Let's talk about, you know, like moguls. There's a lot of them in the business. 
And, you know, you look in other areas of, of just all types of business, you know, you see, like, you know, the other people, they stick together. Right. A lot of times you don't really see us on those unified fronts as much. Right. Like, just imagine all the things that, you know, like, you know, we could build together in business if more people would partner and pull together. Now, I know you've gave, gave a lot of games, you know, like, you know, like Tony Draper. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've dealt with P in some capacity or yeah. another. And Suge and Diddy. Yeah. Why don't we see everybody together more so, more so often? Well, you know, a lot of people, uh, elevators only go up so far. You know what I mean? Which causes them to get caught up in a moment versus a movement. You know, which, which simply means, you know, they can't see the big picture. You know what I mean? You get caught up. For example, with Drake, you know, the decision, you know, I had to make, you know, where he was concerned. Uh, you know, when one crossed the lines of music, you know, a lot of those decisions could have been made with Biggie and Pop way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when 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 leaders or people that call themselves leaders sit back and, and fertilize hate and fertilize, you know what I mean, disrespect, then it ultimately ev ev evolves to other areas, which is not, you know, too happy. Funerals. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, they can't think. You know what I mean? In a nutshell, they just, they can only, some of them can only think so high and some of them can't think at all. And which causes one to not even want to unify. You know what I mean? Not even want to be a team player. They get caught up in a moment. Now, not only have you, you know, been on record as giving game to people, but you also gave information to people. Like, I mean, like you did your best to try to give Puffy and Biggie a heads up what was about to happen at L.A., you know, you usually see Biggie in videos, he's kind of chill. When you give somebody like that information, like, how did Biggie receive it? Like, what was his response? Well, you know, Biggie was laid back then. I remember he was he was puffing on the joint, you know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of times, you know, people don't have the ability, you know, to have foresight, you know what I mean, or the intuition to see things before they happen. And I didn't know that was going to happen, mm -hmm. but I knew the possibilities was higher than normal by him being there because I was hearing things, and I understood uh, the temperature of the street uh, after Pac got killed, you know, how people was, you know, assuming they had something to do with it and all that kind of stuff. So with all of that being said, when I heard about it, I'm like, let me go put the homies up on game, you know what I mean, because I didn't want to ride back and have that on me and something happened, and I could have spoke on it and made a difference. So that's that's what I done. You know, I went back and, hey man, be careful here. I wouldn't even be here. You know what I mean? What's going on? This, you know what I mean? Left Puff went to Biggie. Hey man, be careful out here, man. Do you feel like they receive the information with, uh, like you know, with with real concern? I mean, obviously they didn't get out of there fast enough. Yeah. But do you think they really received the information that you was giving them in a way to where they took it seriously or they just kind of just blew, you know, kind of arrogantly blew it off? I think, you know, me knowing Puff, I think he received it. You know what I mean? We had that kind of respect for one another. I think he received it. But even when you receive something, you have to have like a, a certain amount of uh, wisdom and depth that go with it. Definitely where the streets are concerned. Or you'll never see it coming at you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You can hear me say something, but if you don't, like, really understand the depth and the science behind how it can possibly go down, then you can feel like you're doing the right thing and not be. Or you can feel like you're secured and not be. You know what I mean? It's even an art and a science to how you you move in a vehicle. Yeah. So, 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 so no one can pull up on you and get off like that. So, you know, if you don't know these things, then you just, uh, you're innocent. You don't know. You become a victim. Yeah, there's a lot of mistakes made in both of those situations. And, you know, when you, and, and I don't know which version of the stories that we've seen is real as to, like, you know, what was the reason what happened to Pac happened to Pac and what was the reason what happened to Biggie happened to Biggie. But it just seems like if one person could have yeah. got both of these guys in a room yeah. and just fleshed it out, yeah. they would both still be here right now. Yeah, strong possibility. You know, uh, you know, 
and I know you've talked about the Drake and Pusha T situation and nauseum. Yeah. You know, Drake has a lot going on. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of hip-hop's golden boy. He's breaking Michael Jackson-level records right <laughs> now. You yeah. don't want to mess that up. Yeah. Um, you know, the streets are like, why ain't Pusha T? Why ain't Drake responding to Pusha T? Yeah. And then when they, you know, they saw what you said about, hey, man, don't get in that pig pen mentality and whatnot. Right. Fast forwarding a couple days later, you, you said something. You got, like, some threatening texts. In regards to someone saying, "Hey, keep your hands off of Pusha T or something," or like stay yeah, away man, from Pusha. Yeah, you know that's that's nothing. You know what I mean? Um, you know, people force their opinion, and you know they say things behind these computers and these silent phones and all this kind of stuff that it don't mean nothing to me because you know no weapon formed against me gonna prosper, and uh, you know I I would hate for any of them uh, to be in a situation where bad news beat them home so you know i'm i'm here now the cool thing is man like you know even when you i hear you speak on the records it's with a confidence that you can't really manufacture you know what i'm saying like you could tell when somebody's connected with a higher source in such a way to where like yeah whatever yeah you know, water off a duck's back certain things don't bother you right no i i'm, I'm definitely uh i feel that way and you know you know, my confidence, my my faith, everything, you know what I mean, is is in the Lord's hand. And that's the only one I'm going to fear. So all of this other, y'all bring it on. You know what I mean? I'm a, we had a song on the Ghetto Boys album called Bring It On. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I'm in that bring it on state of mind. And uh, we're going to keep this thing moving. Yo, there's a friend of mine who shall remain nameless. He said, yeah, like, uh, you know. I told him I was going to be interviewing you soon. He's like, yo, I ran into him a few years ago. And it was bullets inside of his car. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like at this stage of the game. So where you still getting your car shot at? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who say bullets inside? Somebody said they saw bullet holes in the side of your oh, car. No, they like, lied to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, bring that them, back whoever, to him. Whoever that was, they lied to you. Gotcha, gotcha. It never happened to none of my vehicles. Now, yeah. Now you you notoriously stay in Houston still, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know beyond you know like despite how much money you've made and like how many things you've done in the business, right? You got you got kids, you got family there. Do you feel like there's an extra, I don't know, energy or effort that has to go into keeping everybody around you safe? Oh yeah, I mean it's a it's an art and science to that. You know your your whole movement, your safety. Uh, you know you have to. My objective, when I leave home, I want to make it home safe to my family. You know what I mean? When you, uh, definitely when you come up amongst uh, a bunch of wolves and sharks, you you learn different techniques on survival. You know what I mean? If not, you're going to get ate alive. So, you know, I learned this in Fifth Ward. So this, it becomes a lifestyle after you learn it, you know, uh, for so long, you just apply the different techniques and different things to your life. And then you share the wisdom, you know what I mean, with those who you love and mean something to you. Word. Now, one person you definitely shared your wisdom with is your son, Jazz, who is a uh, mogul in the making. Yeah. I mean, that dude definitely got an ear for talent. You know, like, you know, people like, cite him for discovering Drake. Right. And... When you look at that situation, I know you were getting out of music, getting ready to move on to bigger and better pastures, but you don't really have any regrets on passing on that, do you? Or is there an artist that you oh. maybe passed on in the past that you wish you would have kept? Well, I never passed on it. You know what I mean? I never passed on Drake. What I done was allowed my son to do a deal with Wayne, and I nourished the situation as he and I mm -hmm. together on that one. Now... There is a situation that I wish I wouldn't have passed on to uh, my partner to do the contracts on, and that was Vanilla Ice. You know, I had Vanilla Ice, and uh, he was ready to, to roll with me, and I pretty much told my partner at the time, sign Vanilla Ice. He, he wanted to sign with us, and uh, he never signed him. So when I heard the song Ice Ice Baby on the radio, I got excited, you know. I thought that was my first hit. I'm like, oh, Ice Ice Baby, you know what I mean? That's us. And I hit the homie. Man, I didn't sign him. I didn't oh, think he man. was that great. So, yeah, I regret that by 12 million records sold. I couldn't even fathom like that album with the rap a lot logo on it. <laughs> but 
You know, because like I, because yeah. you know, when he first came out, he had an independent deal with some label. I forgot yeah. what it was. Tommy, Tommy Kwan. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy Kwan. Yeah. Then yeah, he, and he's still on TV right now doing the HGTV thing. Yeah. Which is nuts. That was before any of my records really broke. You know what I mean? That Vanilla Ice, if you recall, MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice was like, it took off a little head yeah. of my big record. You know, but I think, you know, like the, the way everything worked out for the label, man, definitely solidified in the streets for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, you, you've A lot of artists have come through your label. Oh, yeah. Who is the hardest to work with? Huh. Let me think about that. The hardest to work with. Mm. You know, I had a way of, uh, of figuring out how to work with all of them. But uh, I'm going to have to say between Bushwick and... Uh, let's leave it at Bushwick. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because he's hard to to get him to sit still or yeah. just Bill just do what he want to do? Yeah, let's let Bushwick win that, that crown. No, Bushwick was uh, unpredictable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As you stated earlier, you know, Bushwick is like a time bomb to a certain extent. You know what I mean? He He's a guy that has a whole lot of knowledge of the Bible, but not much wisdom. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird because I remember for a second he was about to do a whole Christian project and run yeah. with that. And I was like, this ought to be interesting because like, he would drop jewels. Yeah. Like, I used to listen to Ever So Clear, really. Because yeah. it was great storytelling, and it takes you back to that whole situation. Because like you guys were doing things that were never before seen in rap, and we didn't have blogs back then to jump on when things happened and check on the updates on how people were doing. So when Bushwick shot himself in the eye, and yeah. then like a couple weeks later, the <laughs> album cover come out, and he on there with the cell phone with the eye hanging out, the streets was going because like yo, you can't make this stuff up, and they made they yeah. made it amazing. You know, it, it was yeah. you can't pay for that yeah. type of promotion. That's right. Right. Man. Right. Raw and uncut. Man, Bushwick <laughs> Bill, man. OG classic. So, you know, yeah. is there any possibility of the Ghetto Boys ever coming home and doing it again? I know Scarface every couple years says, we will never do this again. Mm -hmm. Then there was a uh, a Kickstarter campaign that they was trying to put together to put together a Ghetto Boys album. But, yeah. I mean, they're, they're so loved. Yeah. You know, everywhere. Yeah, I think all things are possible. You know, I think if... Uh, that's something they wanted to do. They they would get together and do it. You know what I mean? Now, getting together and doing it is, you know, I, I was told uh, a few days ago by my partner Rico and Draper, they say, man, we need to get you a, uh, uh, some kind of award for being able to, you know what I mean, deal with these three dudes because they ain't been able to deal with one of them. <laughs> they like, how did you do this, man? Now, your, your, your temperament and demeanor, definitely, you could do politics. Like, I would rather send you over to the North Korea to talk to Kim Jong-un than, you know, this guy we got in the office, man. He's going to get us bombed. <laughs> you know, you, you're real cool to, like, piece it everything down. Yeah. Uh, when is the last time you talked to Choice? Oh, man, it's been a minute, man. It uh, I ain't seen Choice since the Rice Universal uh, thing that they gave me. You know what I mean? She was there, but she's still on point. Still looking good, still choice. Yo, the, the respect that your label had in the streets, man, like anything you guys would drop, the streets would definitely swoop in and pick it up, man. So yeah. when I saw that HIV positive video, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to support that. Let's wrap a lot of logo on there. I'm going right. to get it, man. Right. Uh, we got to wrap it up. But uh, before you go, um, mm -hmm. wisdom, you got tons of it, and I know yeah. a lot of it just came from you living. Right. But what books did you read to kind of open your third eye and get you where you need to be? Well, I began with the Bible. You know what I mean? That book uh, is full of uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as well. And uh, one of my favorite chapters in that is Proverbs. You know what I mean? Everybody that know anything about it is Solomon, King Solomon. You know, supposedly the wisest man to walk the earth. You know what I mean? Wrote his Proverbs. And uh, that was eye-opening to me to read Proverbs. Uh, from there, a good business book that, that really uh, exposed me to my different gifts that I have that I, I wasn't aware of was Think and Grow Rich. By a lot Napoleon of people recommend Hill. that. Yeah, yeah, that book done wonders for me because I had gifts I wasn't aware of. It taught me how to prioritize things, the importance of it. 
You know what I mean? It taught me about goals and different things like that. And then there, there comes this, uh, this awesome book uh, for the new generation is the art and science of respect. You know what I mean? Because in that book, that's a floor plan to the right now that people want to, you know what I mean, accomplish these different things and uh, have a, a blueprint of, of getting there, navigating. And uh, if I had access to a book like that when I started, I would be a hundred million richer. Man, so everybody need to get on a good foot. All right, man, one time. The book is called The Art and Science of Respect. That man right there is Jay Prince. One time, y'all, be sure you pick up the book and the audio book when it drops.